my God, what did you make of that? A good win. They're not a bad team, Swindon. Um, but they started the game well. Uh, the first 10 minutes we couldn't quite get to grips with uh, Bennett, who's a good player, too good for this level, to be honest. Um, he took up some really good positions, but once we found a couple of passes and it was obviously a bit of a random goal set us on our way and all of a sudden we're three 0 up without actually doing a lot. Um, then after that I thought we, we managed the game quite well, apart from the last the last ten minutes obviously they've got nothing to lose, but um, a win's a win. Another, another, to, to think that we went ten months without winning at home in 2018 to go one defeat, one half, I still talk about the first, you know, the one game we did lose was bizarre because the half-time team were told was it can't be that easy again against the Tramp, against Tramp. So, um, to, to have that turnaround, the players have been magnificent. Why do you think the home form has been so good? No idea. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, the, the, the pitch helps, you've got to give credit to the groundsman, the, the pitch does help, it's, it's, it's a perfect surface to play on, we, we do want to play, we struggled a bit last week because we played on a hobby surface, that's the same for both teams, but I think it, it definitely helps the way we play. It was a slightly odd game in that there weren't an awful lot of clear goal scoring chances, but there were five goals. Yeah, well that's, what, that's like you said, it, it was an odd game, we had quite a few opportunities in the first half, well it nearly moments where we nearly slipped someone in, they just got a last a last minute block, but one, one thing that we are, we we can we can handle the physicality of teams now. So that, that one is the game today. It's all right playing nice football, but our physicality one is the game. Um, balls in the box and you know corners and headers and things like that. So we played some good stuff, but I think the difference now between maybe when I first came in is that we've got a physicality as well as being able to play. And you must be pleased with the reaction you got from Monday. Yeah, well, the, the, the players knew they let themselves down. Um, you know, the, the, the staff question whether we pick the right team, the right shape. The players know they didn't deliver what they what they can, but we've not had many. Four or six games in League Two, you're going to have the odd one, um, and and we took that. The, the players worked very hard for six months, so to give it up, and that's what we said to them before the game is we need a reaction after the other day. Um, there's a decent crowd, and you've worked for six months. Don't let the last the last thing people think is oh that was an abject performance. Because the other the six months work before and goes out the window because it's that that's their lasting memory. So people will be talking about it over the summer now, so that's good. And potentially you've still got a chance to get to 60 points, which will be quite an achievement given where you were at the end of October. Yeah, we'll be going full out, flat out next week. We're trying to get to that 60 points. I've said it all along. The points will de determine where we finish. Um, that, that focus that, that that doesn't that doesn't change. I was authentic and I meant it when I said it. It, it, you know, it didn't it in the case of finishing 21st, it's what our points will tell us, so you finish 60, 60 points, you kind of finish in and around mid-table, which is, which is good. And going back to the, the three goals, the two goals that you scored, uh, that were your goals if you like, the, um, both were from winning balls in the box and then two players gambling and getting in first. Yeah, and like I said, it, that, that, that was the physical side of the game, so we all know, most people that watch us a lot know that we can play and we can pass it and move it around, but Playing in this league, set plays are important. Um, we've got good delivery, and we've got we've been a threat from set plays all season. Um, that's why last week was disappointing as well. Because a we didn't turn up, but we conceded from set plays, which was unlike us as well. So uh, last week was just a, a bad day. And good for the fans to see Alex Adai back. How, how, how fit is he? Uh, well, he's blowing now. Um, no, he, he, he's fit. His hamstrings fit. He's just got heart and lungs fit. Um, so, but like we thought, it was an opportunity to just to show people that he's he's back again. He's been in and around the group, and anyone that knows Alex, he's been great because he's he's a nutcase lunatic. He's happy all the time. I don't know how he does my editing sometimes because he's too happy all the time. But he, uh, he he's been great, and I'd like him to maybe get on a nick a goal or something like that. But he's, everyone knows what Alex is. The uh, pre the sorry the pre-match uh, awards. Clearly, uh, fifty percent of the awards going to Luke Varney, which just reinforces uh, the way in which he's embedded in two children in the last six months. Yeah, well, it's probably more than fifty percent because I'm not sure he qualifies for Young Player of the Year. Um, <laughs> but he's, 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 he's been he's been brilliant. I think he appreciates the opportunity that the club have given him, and he's. You know, I spoke to Gary Bowyer the other day at Bradford, and he was about something completely different. And he called him Captain Sensible because he's anything but Captain Sensible. But he's, he's been, his, his hunger and his zest and his enthusiasm for the game at the age that he's at is, is, is brilliant and infectious. How big an impact has he been in the dressing room? 
Uh, uh, big. It's, it's not, not going away from it. You know, we've, we've had a lot of these conversations of, of how he, he, first and foremost, he's delivering on the pitch, which the awards tell you, and his goals return tell you that as well. But like I said, if you see a 37 year old who's played in the Premier League, scored goals in front of the cops, scored goals at Old Trafford, and he's, he's still running around with that. It has to send a message to players. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's more frustrating because you see young players and they're like, oh, are we doing this, are we doing that? And you look over there and go, it's not seen him. He's in the top two or three of the running every day, the, the physical data. So um, when you accumulate how far they've run every day, he's always in the top two or three because he runs around. It's, <laughs> sometimes it's the hardest thing to do is get footballers to run around, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, you'd be surprised. Um, but he, like I said, he, he's infectious. He, he always has a smile on him. It's similar to Alex, really, because um, he, 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 because of where he's been and the age of that, he knows there's not long left. So he's, he's enjoying every moment like it's his last. And when you look back, do you think that was one of the pivotal moments of the season, signing week? Um, it obviously helps. It's, it was one of those things. It sort of like he, it sort of fell in our lap, really. Um, and obviously, having played against him, I knew what he was. I knew what he was from other people I've played with as well, as regards to character and personality and professionalism. So, every side is a gamble. You don't sign a player thinking they're going to be a bad signing, but he's come good on every front, really. I appreciate you won't be able to talk about individuals, but uh, should we expect any more announcements on contracts? In the next uh, week or hopefully, in the next week, there'll be a couple. Um, but again, this, there's always like crossing T's and dotting I's and things like that. And you never know, someone might come in for somebody that we don't know about. So, like I said, I don't get too obsessed with it really. It's, I leave it with Mickey, and Mickey does a good job. Uh, the players try and look after themselves with their agents, and Mickey looks after the closers. As long as both parties can agree, hopefully there'll be two, possibly three in the next, uh, in the next week. We talked a lot about players staying. What's the process at Cheltenham for you bringing players in from other clubs? As regards to how, how does it work in, in the way that you and Mickey work together in terms of identifying bringing players in? Well, we, there's, there's constantly a list. In every position there's a list of, of players, and then it's who stay in will determine, uh, determine sorry, who who we want. So until we know who's staying, we can't really focus on anything else. But there's lots of. Um, there's the, we're doing exactly the same as the players. We're, we're talking to other players' agents as well. So it's not a one-way thing. It's not. A, we're not hanging on. Hanging on, oh, I hope he signs, hope he signs. If he doesn't sign, we're done. That's what we're scrambling. That's what we don't want. There is, there is a, pl a plan in place. Um, we, we do want to keep a lot of the group together. We don't, we don't want the. I think in the years gone by here, there's been a big turnover of players every year, and it's it's difficult for continuity. It's difficult for supporters to buy into what's going on because they don't know who's playing every week. So I think that's something we are conscious of, and we are planning to try and build something. Recognising you are trying to keep the vocal players together, have you got anybody right now who you'd say um, will be new to the club next season? Uh, no. Um, well, no, like I said, we, we, we haven't actually identified, we have identified, but we haven't, we don't, until we know who, what we've got, we're not, we can't, we're not in a position to, because there's a budget, and there's, where he goes, all that sort of, all that sort of things that go in. So no, there's no, there's people I'd like to sign, but there's no, yeah, he'll be coming in the next summer, he'll definitely be in next season, apart from the ones that have signed. Final question, Mikey. You must be pleased as well with the fact that there does seem to be now be a much more genuine connection between the fans and the club, as epitomised what happened at the end of the game. Yeah, I think it's. I think it is important. I think I don't know whether the club lost its identity or not. I don't. Know, it's really difficult for me to because obviously I'm not here to criticise anyone that's gone. Because Gary done an unbelievable job on what he did. He quite rightly has the, the status that he does with, at the club because of. But I, I think there was a. I don't know, like I say, a disconnect between between the two. When I when I was when we were successful as a as a team 20 years ago, there was a real connection. Um, I think it is important. It is. It's not a football hotbed. It's. You know, it isn't ingrained into kids. From, you know, you play for Burnley, and every boat walking around has got a Burnley tattoo and a British Bulldog tattoo, and his son has, and his son has, and his son has, because it's it's a way of life there. So we we need to actively get out into the community more, get the players out into the community more, because. Because we need the supporters, a for finance, finance, and, and b for their support. It's, it, it is important. The players do appreciate it, um, and it is nice. By all accounts, we've lost six-one the last two home games in, in the last two seasons. So it's nice to be able to go out and clap the fans and thank them for their appreciation, rather than standing out there and getting abuse hurled at us. So um, I, I, that was another 
another thing we talked about to the players beforehand. So it's, it's always a two-way thing. The players have worked hard, and I think the supporters appreciate that, and vice versa.